Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, today I wanted to share with you, I need to um, make myself some more um, dyed papers for my journals. I'm running low, especially on colored. Um, and I'm talking about different colors, not just brown that you get with... Um, tea uh, staining or coffee dyeing. Um, I need some colored pages. So I'm going to use food coloring if I can get these disposable vinyl gloves on. I have big hands for a lady anyway. And so that is always a little frustrating for me getting that on. Uh, I have a, well, I have several disposable pans here. One has got quite a bit of water in it. I have a little coffee cup, a little eight ounce, maybe even six ounce uh, coffee cup. And then I have my food coloring. Now, I have gel food coloring. <laughs> food coloring. Um, if you have the um, little traditional teardrop kind of food coloring, that is totally fine too. It probably is even easier than this. With the gelled food coloring, um, you kind of have to um, mix it in a little batch first before you add it to um, your water bath. So I've got green, blue, red, and yellow. I won't be using the yellow today. So I'm going to put that up. Um, I need some pinky red pages, and then I want to make some um, green pages, maybe even some blue-green pages. So that's why I've got those out. I've got an old decrepit <laughs> cookie sheet with a um, uh, baking tray on the top, or a you know cooling tray rack whatever on top of it and i'll be putting the finished bathed pages onto that to dry for a while i've got just some regular old copy paper you can see it's from a previous stack that i tea stained I'm gonna put that up here i've got an old shirt on <laughs> so if i make a mess um practice makes good enough when it comes to this. Uh, it never makes perfect. Uh, I love kind of um, very wild and splattered and grungy papers. So that's what I'm going to show you today that I'm going to do. And they're not going to be perfectly evenly dyed. But when you are hand making things, I say this, I feel like in every one of my videos, when you're hand making things, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're hand making it. Anyway, I have old clothes on. I have my vinyl gloves on. I'm going to start with the red. I have two pans stacked together with this. And I'm not going to do um, a really deep bath of um, pages. I don't know. I might need that yellow to kind of soften up this red because I don't want my pages to look like they got blood all over them. <laughs> so I put... Just a few drops. You saw what I did there. I have a little. I didn't bring a spoon. Should have brought a spoon in here. So now I have a very red ink that I'm going to be dyeing with. And I believe I do need some of that yellow to kind of soften up this red. What do y'all think? We're going to try it anyway. That's what I love about this is just experimenting and seeing what happens. Because I don't want a, I really don't want orange and I know that I'm going to get a little bit of an orange flare to this by adding the yellow, but I sure don't want blood red. So we're just going to kind of go with that and see what we get. Yep, that's going to be a little more orange than what I'm looking for, but 
No, I think it might be good seeing that on the edge there. So I'm going to put my yellow back, put my red back, take my greens and blues out of here. Okay, I'm going to take the bottom pan away because we'll use that one again shortly. I'm going to pour that. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to really like that. Even though it is a little bit orange, we've got a bunch of um, yellow in here. So I'm going to dip some more and get it in there. I think I'm really going to like that, especially for fall journals. That's going to be gorgeous. I love that. Um, I think I will, though. I say I love it. <laughs> and then I'm going to add to it. So see, when you're dyeing paper, it's just kind of like trial and error. You do what um, you like and see if it turns out the way you like it. So then I'm just going to get my tongs and kind of roll that around some. Then I like doing this because, like, if I'm ink dyeing using Tim Holtz re-inkers, you know, if I'm ink dyeing <clears throat> and I put that ink down in there after the fact, I like to just leave it plopped and not mix it in so that that first paper that goes down in there gets a lot of saturated um, splotchy splatters. So I like that effect. And I think I'll get the same effect with this. So I'm going to add just enough water into this pan that it covers the bottom. Okay. There we go. It took a little bit more to cover the bottom of that one because my pan has worked. I've used it so many times. I apologize for the light glare right there. Nothing really I can do about that. Okay, the more water I added, the more it looks oranger than I want it to look. So I'm going to plop some more red in here. And I'm just going to use my hand to kind of get that mushed around a little bit. And then I'm not going to worry about the sedative that is at the bottom because that's going to make some really pretty things on that bottom paper. So I'm just going to start submerging paper. I'm going to do about <clears throat> six to eight at a time. Oh, look how orange that is. It's more red orange than it is just plain orange, but um, I'm really going to like that color for some fall journals, that's for sure. I really just wanted to show y'all this color first as an experiment. Just keep putting it down in there and submerging it and then get the next one and submerge it. So there's three. Um, really just wanted to show y'all this color before we get to the greens and blues because that's the ones I'm really needing the most of right now is greens and blues. So this is just kind of experimental. I think I have an HP paper in here that I can just throw away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, there's three pages. Now let's do... If I can separate it with the vinyl gloves on for and then five, six, seven, and one more, and then we'll start putting it on our baking sheet with the cooling rack on top of it. Okay, I'm going to put, this is like cumbersome in my studio because I usually do this stuff in my kitchen and on top of my dining room table. 
but I wanted to show you all this. I'm going to gently as possible pick up my pages one at a time. Now look here. You remember the sediment? Look at that beautiful piece that's going to show up on that paper. That piece right there. I love that. Okay, and I'm just going to have it kind of wonky, falling off of one edge. That's going to give us some um, pretty little designs on it. And then when you put the paper over on there, don't worry about it being totally flat. It does not have to be. I have a black speck of some kind. Something in the water, I guess. See, we've got another piece of um, that red food coloring sediment there. Um, you want to make sure that you get everything on or inside the um, baking sheet so that nothing drips on anything else. Now, wrinkles. I am intentionally leaving the paper wrinkled like that because I like um, the character it gives the pages once it is dry. Um, I'm not too big of a stickler on if I tear my page. There's a little bitty tear on that one because I like grungy dyed journal pages. Now look before I put this one on. See how this one is all wrinkled up? You've got those little peaks and valley things. That right there is going to give you more intense color in those valleys. And that's what I love about hand dyed papers. So I think before I dye any more in this water, after I separate these, that I'm going to add even more red so that I can get a little bit more of an intense color. Okay, there are those out. Let's add some more red. That's almost like a sherbet color, orange sherbet color. So I'm very anxious to see how that turns out. I want to get quite a bit more red added into this and intensify the color a little bit. I'm just going to wiggle that gel food coloring around. See now if you use the um, normal food coloring, you're not going to get this little gelled up stuff. You won't have to worry about that. But that's all I had in my cabinet currently. So just thought I would use it up. Mm, I'm really liking this color. So let's move a little coffee cup over and get eight more pages. And I'm just going to go right on top of that. Not worry about it. I like when they intermingle colors. Oh yeah, this is a much more intense color. I'm liking that. And this is just regular copy paper that I am dyeing. Um, at the end, I will get a few paper doilies and I will also dye them just so that I can have some of this color. Now let me get these separated. There's four. And just let them sit for uh, a minute or two before you start taking out. Because if you start taking out immediately, once you uh, submerge them, I started to say emerge them. Once you submerge them, then you're barely going to get any saturation of color on these. The hardest part of this is separating the pages once you put them in there. Oh yeah, I can tell the difference. These are going to be more saturated and a deeper orange soda color. I like that. Okay, I'm going to take the rest of these out.
Now I'm going to bring out some paper doilies that I have in my drawer off to the right here. And we're going to get some of these dyed. There we go, that one's all by itself. And I'm just going to plop these right after they've been in there. I'm going to plop them on top of the papers. Now, you can also do the doilies throughout your uh, page dyeing process and then you've got that um, design that the doilies have you'll have that throughout your papers also here's some larger ones i'm going to dye all of these so i don't care that i'm getting ink from my gloves all over them and you can do notebook paper you can do um, little guest tickets, library cards, um, book pages. Oh yeah, I need to do some book pages with this too. We'll do that in just a minute when we get done with all of these doilies. Now this one page is going to have some more design on it because of all the doilies. I'm just putting right smack on top of it and I'm good with that. I like design. And I'm okay that uh, maybe some of the doily is not fully saturated with the ink that we've made here. Woo. Try your best not to tear the doilies. All right, let's do the rest of these and then we'll do some book pages. I've got lots of book pages over here and one stack that is a very very white that i would like to get some color on so let's use up most of the rest of this ink or food color water that we've made on book pages and uh, while you're letting your pages dry whether you put this in the oven to dry 250 uh, 250 degrees and you have to sit and watch it like a hawk just when you see it kind of rustling and uh, <laughs> uh, crinkling you better take the puppies out because you know you've got to watch it you can't just walk away put it in there for 250 and then walk away you have to stay and watch but whether you uh, bake them in the oven to dry or <clears throat> just let them air dry. Uh, whatever water you have left over. If you have um, a page that you see just didn't dry with a lot of color at all, you can splatter it with your leftover water. And I do that every time because I love splattered pages. Okay, I'm going to move these so I can get some more over here. There's our doilies. Okay. Now, let's get that stack of white book pages. And I'm going to do quite a few of these. Always forget about book pages. Now, they take the color very quickly. So, no um, need to just leave them saturated if you don't want to. Of course, if you do leave them in there, you're going to get a little bit more of a saturation. So whatever you would like and however saturated you would like yours and you can do book pages um, two at a time if you want to I mean you could do the coffee pages two at a time too you just are not going to get any kind of saturation probably on one side of the book page I mean on one side of the copy page paper whatever I am multitasking here y'all so my words are not <laughs> coming out too well. Um, I will also show you, I usually do not bake my pages. I like just to air dry mine. Um, one main reason is I multitask at everything in my life. And so I just don't see myself staying in the kitchen and watching an oven like, an, like a hawk. I'd rather just um, 
put it on my towels on my dining room table and I will show you all that in just a bit when I get that going um, since I can't use this camera to show you my dining room table I'll have to iPhone that for you in just a bit but all of this that is on my sheet right here I will okay that's all I'm going to do with that color anyway I will get old towels all old bath towels and lay them out all over my dining room table and then I will lay out each individual page and you know overlap them some because I don't have that big of a dining room table overlap them some and let them air dry and I'll just come back to them every once in a while kind of flip them and move them around there's one that's really really saturated that needs more air I'll move it to the top stuff like that but I'll show you my dining room table filled with these in just a minute now that I have all of the orangey red peachy colors <laughs> done now I'm going to do green which is what I am needing the most of so I want to do an intense green so there is a lot of food coloring now I've washed this pan off from where I had the orange but I mean it's not completely cleaned off I still have a little bit of um, peachy color on the rack I'm okay with that if you want it completely clean then you'll need to um, do that but I'm good with intermingling the colors of my paper I want it even more intense than this so I'm going to add more to this concentrated cup the coffee cup that I'm starting out with um, because I will add more water to this pan and then that's going to dilute that um, color make it a little um, less intense so I've added this was a full bottle so I've added about a fourth maybe maybe a third of the tube of food coloring for the green so we're going to start with this and I'm going to dye some copy paper and book page and doilies and then I'm going to add blue to the pan and try to get like a um, teal a deep teal color maybe we'll see if it works out whatever works out I'm going to be fine with look at that beautiful green color yummy okay I'm going to put this pan off to the side for a minute and get dip me a little bit more water and kind of get that set sediment all mixed up and in there get that sediment that's on the bottom mixed in good okay so that's kind of vibrant so when we add more water to it it'll dilute it down some let's go ahead and do that just to barely cover the bottom of the pan kind of mix it around just a little bit more water Whoop. <laughs> splattered it out didn't I? here's my rag that off that got on my desk we don't want that um, I think what I will do is in this other pan I'm going to dip up some water let's just pour it into my up and I'm going to go ahead and do blue over here and then we can mix it up <laughs> uh, we can mix it up the two colors together in a minute and see what we get um, I'm just going to mix with my fingers Ooh, that is a very intense blue color So I'm just mixing, mixing, mixing with my gloved hand. 
Oh, wow, look at that. We are ready to uh, dye some eggs, I'm just telling you. <laughs> oh, I like that color, though. That is a pretty vibrant blue. I love that. All right. There we go. Now, I'll get my pan back up here. Let me see, where can I sit in my coffee cup? There we go. Still on the mat. And here are my papers and my book pages. I'll set them over on this side. And bring up my pan and just have it off to the side of this one pan. Because let's do green first. I'm just going to do some book pages here first. Oh, look, that's already giving me like a teal color. I like that. Just come off of my glove. So we'll have a couple of different colors on these book pages. I like that. Ooh, look at that. It had that very concentrated blue on it from my glove. Mmm, happy accident. I love those kind of things. Put that down in there. And that is a very pretty green color that we're getting. Okay, let's do some of the copy paper. Oh goodness, that's pretty. Separate. Try to with the gloved hand. And just mush down and mush down and mush down. Making sure that both sides of the paper get color before you take out. There we go. And while that's sitting, I can add some to this blue pan. And I am not concerned about mixing the colors. Oh my gracious, that is pretty. I love that color. But, you know, teal and aqua are my favorite. Love, love, love those colors. So that is working out very well. The green and blue together. I think I'm really going to love those mixed like that. So this page that we lay down will get some blue in on it from the pages below it. And we're just going to take out and add on to the pan and take out and add on to the pan. Making sure to get a few little wrinkles in our pages when we lay them down so that we can get some more intense color on some of the other pages. Mm, pretty. Look at that, how pretty. I love that. Okay, let's do a few doilies. <clears throat> and the green. That's just going to give you a little subtle look to it. And then when you lay the doilies and the papers out. You can lay the doilies on top of the papers and give the papers more character and design once they start drying. Oh, that is like St. Patrick's Day exploded in my pan, ain't it? I love the color though. Love that green. Okay, I'm going to do some more green pages and go and lay them out to dry. Then I'm going to come back and do some more blue. And I'm really liking that blue by itself. So I'll do a lot of blue just by itself. And I'll show you that. 
and then we'll mix it together I don't know if I'm gonna like it mixed together but we're gonna mix it together at the very end and do just a few pages with the mixed together color here are the blue pages that I just dyed and so I have um, some regular copy paper and then I have book page and then let's do a few doilies let's say five and get them in there there we go I'm just gonna put them down in there I'm not worrying if I'm covering the entire thing because by the time we get them on the dining room table to dry it will um, be on top of something else that is totally saturated so they'll get there all right so I'm gonna go lay out my blue papers on my dining room table I've already done the peach ones and then I've already done the green ones and I'm gonna lay the blue ones out we're gonna come back and we're gonna mix these two colors together see what we get and finish up my little pile of um, copy paper and book pages and then I'll show you my dining room table and then I will come back though this is a, like an all-day process that's why I usually do this on Saturdays uh, about once a month maybe <laughs> and um, then I'm going to show you the dried results once everything gets dried on the table I'll show you all the different colors and the things that we got let's go ahead and I will mix pour this over into my green and then let that kind of smooge together and we'll see what we come up with on that one so we have this kind of gelling together I put my rag up here I've got my baking rack baking pan here with my cooling rack on top of it okay yeah that's a pretty color it is kind of like a um, more greenish teal whereas the other blue we had was kind of more aqua teal I like that that is pretty so it's kind of got an emerald feel to it and I love that since I am a May birthday baby emerald is my birthstone so that works well <laughs> I'm going to um, dye more book page more copy paper and more doilies in this color combination we have here go and lay it out on the dining room table and I will show you my huge pile of dyed papers on the table here are my papers laid out on my dining room table I have my ring light out to kind of help with the lighting because in my dining room it's more yellow lighting than it is um, white light so here it all is I'm just gonna walk the perimeter of I did, even did a few index cards I'm gonna walk the perimeter of my dining room table and let you see so we're really ombre here so we're like a aqua color that's just the blue and then we've got this really intense green here that was just the green and then this is the in intermingled <laughs> blue and green there on top and then we have all of that beautiful peach color now some of that peach has got some blue mingled and some green mingled on it and I love that this is the peach that was not as intense and then let me go around my ring light over there is where I added more red and got even more of that peachy deep peachy color 
So there it is. I'm gonna kind of pull out wide a little bit for you to see. And it's even got my ring light in it. <laughs> even further up than I can even see my screen. So I hope you're being able to see most of the table. But there are all of my papers and I will put uh, a box fan, just a standing box fan over the top of this to help it dry a little quicker. But we're about three layers deep here with papers. So it'll take a little while, but as soon as they are dry enough, and before I iron them, some of them I might not even iron, but some of the more crinkly ones I will iron. But before I do that, and they're all dry, I will show you in my studio with the better lighting, <laughs> all of the pages and the intense color and the little splotches that we get with all of this. I am super excited about this. Usually my dyeing sessions are um, just brown from coffee dyeing or tea staining. So I'm very excited about what this is gonna look like. Almost like Easter colors in here. Love it. Oh my gracious, y'all, look at these papers. I mean, it does look like a beautiful, beautiful Easter egg. Look at that, it's so pretty. I so needed some other colors besides brown for my journals. Excuse my oven going off. It's at temperature, just the right temperature for me and Bethany's uh, pizzas that we're making. The boys are out at a um, friend's singing right now. So they went out and we had some stuff to do. So we stayed in and we're having a girls night in. Um, anyway, let me get all of these kind of color coordinated so that you can see the ombre kind of colors. So we've got um, our pinks and peaches that we did. Look at those beautiful dollies. And they are even darker in person than they're showing up on uh, camera. And I've got a couple of still shots for you. Here's the blues. Look at that beautiful dyeing on that. Oh, I love that. Here's some of the green. It didn't show up as well on the dollies, but I mean, look at that one. It got spilt on and that's some gorgeous. Look at these, Bethany. Look at all the different colors I got. This is pretty. Yeah. So I don't have just brown paper for my journals anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but the green really didn't show up that good on the dollies but oh that one did it's like a cotton it's gonna be a cotton candy journal yeah i mean all of this won't go in one journal oh, yeah. but i told them it's kind of like easter color it's like oh a, yeah it's like a big bright easter egg <laughs> <laughs> but all this was done with food coloring oh okay you know i usually do um coffee dye or yeah. tea stain you mm -hmm. know but i tried um food coloring so this one was fun cool so here's the doilies, greens, and then these pinks and peaches really showed up really good. Like I said, the color, uh, my camera is showing really, really bright. The color on these is a lot more saturated than it's showing on camera. Same with the papers. They're a little darker. Oh, look at that one. It got spilt on. and has got all kinds of little stuff on it. And do I mind that... Some of these doilies are torn. Nope, I don't. 
they can either be um, part of the flip in the journal or I can um, adhere them to a page. Look at all of that that got put on that one. Cute. Okay, so that's all the doilies. Lots and lots of doilies. I love that. Love that we got a bunch. Okay, I'm going to color coordinate and get all the greens together, blues and pinks all separated, and then I'll show you all of the papers and book pages. So what did y'all think of that? Oh, I love these, y'all. I'm so excited. Okay, so I have lots more green book pages than I do anything else. But they are just so pretty. I love this. And some of these in here have some really, I mean, look at that. All the different colors. And Bethany's right. It looks like cotton candy some of it. I just love that. So there are the book pages. Great shot there. Love it. Now let's sort the copy paper. So we have, I mean, look at the cells that developed on that one. It's just like an abstract painting. Look at the back side of that one. Oh my gracious, that is gorgeous. All right, so got pinks or peaches that way, blues this way. I mean, and the, both sides of these are gorgeous. Look at this one where a doily dried on top of it, and then some of the blue leaked onto the pink. So pretty. All right, I'm going to sort now. So there is the money shot. Is that not so pretty? Oh, I love how these came out. So I've got blues on the front. Let me see if I can fan it for you. Blues on the front with all those gorgeous sails on them. And then we get into some greens look at that with some peach and pink and blue intermingled that's even got a little yellow in it so pretty and then we have our peachy pinks and the peachy pink ones really showed up the doilies if a doily was laying on top of them so for whatever reason the peachy pinks showed a little bit more of that than um, the other two colors did but I would say that this has been a wonderful, wonderful dyeing session. <laughs> the um, three index cards I did, they were in that green, and the back sides of them, you know, showed up a lot more. So, 
Um, there could be a little bit of decorating done on these and then writing on the other side or just decorate this other side and write on the side that got more of the concentration of color on them. So I'm going to try to um, put these all up on their edges so that you can see that good shot of all the crinkly goodness. I mean to tell you, <laughs> that is some pretty paper right there that I cannot wait to use in journals. Thank y'all so much for stopping by and sticking around with me as I dyed papers today. It is a process and you just have to be patient and look at your bounty that you get. From that patience. I love it. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. Mm -hmm.